Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at solvency ratios. This topic is part of the financial statement analysis part 5 of 7. In part 1 we looked at the introduction of financial statement analysis. In part 2 we looked at horizontal, vertical and common size. In part 3 we looked at the liquidity ratios. ratios. In part 4 we looked at activity ratios. And in this part, part five, we look at the solvency ratios. The solvency ratios are similar in concept to the liquidity ratios, except they measure the ability of the company to pay off its long-term debt. So on the long term, can you pay off your long-term debt? Can you survive long enough? Do you have enough ability to survive long enough? Can you handle additional borrowing? This is what the solvency ratios are measuring. There are a few ratios we're going to look at, and it's going to be the same concept. We're going to go to the balance. We're going to go to the Excel sheet and look at the figures, compute the numbers, and try to make sense of them. Once again, we are looking at this balance sheet and income statement, and these, this balance sheet can be found on farhatlectures.com. So let's take a look at our solvency ratios and try to make more sense of them. Let's take a look at the first one, which is called the debt ratio and it's computed by taking total liabilities divided by total debt. Now, to understand the debt ratios or the solvency ratios, it's very important to understand the concept, the basic concept accounting equation, which is assets equal to liabilities plus equity. So let me show you what does that mean. If you have $100 in assets, 40% is debt, 60% must be equity. So assets equal to $40 in liabilities plus 60% in equity. Now the debt ratios show you the proportion of your assets that are financed by debt. How much of your assets financed by debt? For example, this example here, we have 40 out of the $100 is financed by debt. It means the debt to equity ratio, debt to asset ratio is 40%. Well, is this good? Is this bad? Well, here's what we can say about the equity, uh, about the debt ratio. The higher the debt ratio, the higher the proportion of your assets financed by debt. What does that mean? It means more debt, and this theme is going to reoccur again and again in the session. The more debt you have, the riskier you are as a company. The lower is the flexibility. It means you cannot borrow additional money if needed because you're already maxed out or close to maxed out. And some companies, they might have, for example, a ratio of 80 or 90 percent for example airline companies most of their assets are financed through debt. their airplanes are leased which is a form of debt it means if we have a lot of debt it means we are relying less on equity so let's assume in this example we change this to 80 percent liabilities and 20 percent equity now it's 80 percent it means 80 percent of your assets are financed through debt now for the company that we have we can take a look at the last two years and see what's happening here just to get get an idea if we take total assets divided by total liabilities for year one it's 0.54 it means for every dollar we have an asset 54 pennies are coming from liabilities from debt now is this reasonable as an auditor you have to ask yourself is this what we expect in this industry is this what we expect from prior years so the auditor will always come with an expectation and if the expectation is to have 0.4, then something happened. They're somehow they're having a lot of debt. If the expectation is 0.7, and what we're sh what we're seeing here is 0.54, then we have to question this: Are they hiding any debt? What happened? Did they pay off the debt? And if so, how did they were, were able to pay off the debt? Or are they hiding? Is there any debt that's off the balance sheet that we can't see anymore? But if we compare those two companies from year to year, it's pretty stable. And that's the good thing about uh, about ratios. When you have multiple years, there should be some sort of a relationship between the years. So if it's stable and if there is no reason for those ratios to change, then any change will draw attention. It means take a look at this. It might be a red flag, need further investigation. The equity ratio, kind of similar to the debt ratios, and you're going to see they complement each other, is total liabilities divided by total equity. If we remember this example, when we started, we said 100 in assets, $40 finance through debt. It means the remaining through equity. So if we take 60 divided by 100, our equity ratio is, is 60%. Again, what does that mean? It means 60% of our assets are financed through equity. Now, 
bear in mind equity could be retained earnings, equity could be common stock, equity could be preferred stock, so on and so forth. But the point is 60% coming from equity. Well, do we like to have more equity or more debt? Depending on your risk tolerance. If you are a risky, if you are a risky company, if you like risk, you will take more on debt. That means more risk. Why? Because debt, you have to pay the interest rate, whether you are doing good or not. And that's why debt is risky. When you rely more on equity, the equity holders are willing to wait if the company is not making profit because they're the company themselves. So you're under no pressure. So that's why higher equity ratio means uh, means more flexibility for the company because if an opportunity comes and you need, you need to borrow money, now you have less, less debt relative to your asset. Maybe lenders, maybe bankers can lend you the money. And notice here, if we look at this company for year one, it's 0.46. And notice it's no coincidence that if we add 0.54 plus 0.46, it gives us 100%. It means this company, the one that we are working with, 54% of it is financed through that, 46% of it is financed through equity. And notice in year two, we relied less on that, we went down 2% on that, and we relied more on equity, and that 2% went to equity. So it's very important to understand this. And debt to equity and equity ratio should be pretty straightforward, or at least I hope you understand them. Before I proceed, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. I'm a useful addition to your accounting education, to your CPA exam. My motto is saving accounting students and CPA candidate one at a time. To invest in yourself. This is a list of my course catalog where I have lectures, multiple choice, true false about intermediate accounting, advanced accounting, governmental accounting, basic accounting, managerial, so on and so forth. My CPA material is aligned with your Roger, Wiley, Becker, Gleam, so on and so forth. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to all previously AI CPA released questions and that's 1,500 of them with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. I'm gonna go from the equity ratio to the equity multiplier. And if you notice, all what we did with the equity ratio and the equity multiplier is we flipped the numerator and the denominator. What does that equity multi multiplier means? How do we interpret this? So let's start with an equity multiplier. Let's assume we have a company with $100 in assets equal to zero liabilities plus 100 in equity. It means this company is 100% finance and equity. So if we compute the equity multiplier, we'll take 100 divided by 100 equal to one. Well, what does one mean? One means everything is coming from the equity shareholders because to find what's coming from the from the debt will take the one minus we always subtract one it means the other part of the company and it's going to give us zero so let's use some numbers let's assume we have 100 dollars in asset and let's assume for the sake of illustration um 75 is coming from equity uh, from debt and 25 from equity. Assets equal 75 of liabilities, 25 debt. Now let's compute the equity multiplier. It's gonna be 100 divided by 25, and that's gonna give us four. What does four means? Well, four means for, um, for every time we, if, if, you wanna, if, if you wanna look at it from a dollar perspective, um, for every dollars we raise, if we subtract one, three coming from debt. So for example, if we raise $4, if we, if we have $4, three coming from debt, one coming from equity. And the higher this number, and the higher this number, the more leverage we are. So let's assume we have $100, let me just go to the extreme, $90 from debt plus $10 in equity. Now 100 divided by 10 equal to 10. It means every time we have $10 to work with, $9 is coming from, all we have to do is subtract one to come to the debt portion. $9 is coming from debt and $1 is coming from equity. Now we are really, really highly leveraged. It means basically we control, like the, the owners have practically not, not zero risk. They're taking a lot of risk, but they're not risking their money. Yes. 
there's a lot of risk in running a company with a lot of debt but who's gonna who's gonna carry the bag if in case anything went went bad the debt holders they invested most of the money the company is highly leveraged so this is what the equity multiplier is the higher it is the riskier is the company it means we are relying on that now if we go back here and look at debt to equity ratio it shows us the the structure basically if again if we go back to 100 equal to 75 using this 75 and 25 and what we do is we if we take 75 liabilities divided by 25 of equity we got three and what did i tell you it tells us how much the debt the the debt the debtors are bringing to the company all we have to do is notice 217 minus one equal to 117 for this company what, what, what's going to happen for every two dollars and 17 cent the 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 debt holders are bringing one dollar and 17 cent okay for the four when we had the when we had the when we had the equity multiplier four for every dollars minus one the debt to equity will be three that means for every dollar we bring in equity the debt holders are bringing three to make that that to make that four dollars so one uh, three from the from the creditors one from the equity holders and the more you bring from the debtors the riskier is the company but again the higher is the return for the equity holder now why are we talking about all of this well again from an audit auditor's perspective if there's anything unusual if the company become highly leveraged this is important for the auditor high leverage means high risk high risk mean, means more pressure on the company to fudge the numbers so the higher that risk so if you see these numbers if you see debt ratios is increasing if you see the equity multiplier is increasing well the company is coming under financial pressure you have to pay a little bit more attention to that company the times interest earned is basically computing taking uh, income before interest and taxes and be careful income before interest and taxes divided by the interest expense let's start with some simple numbers let's zoom our income before interest and taxes is 10 our interest expense is 2 the answer is 5 how do we interpret this number 5 it means our income our earnings before we pay interest and taxes can cover our interest expense five times now generally speaking we want this number from a investor's perspective creditor's perspective especially creditor's perspective also investor because you have to pay the creditors first we want to be this as high as possible this is basically a degree of protection the higher the better so if you only had one dollar in interest expense and you have earnings before interest and taxes of 10 then this is equal to 10 it's higher the higher the, the more protection again how do you use this if this number you would you you would have an expectation walking into the audit that this should be seven you you computed the number at 7.98 well it's a little bit higher than seven but it, it is within seven but if the answer was six or the answer was five now it's they have less protection we need to know what's going on just just fyi or if the if if the answer was 10 for this company rather than 7.98 what's happening are they are they reducing their interest expense and increasing their income are they playing with the figures so on and so forth now the good thing about interest expense it's easy to compute why because as long as as long as you know how much the, that the company has you can estimate the interest expense because based on the loan balances and the interest you could compute interest expense and you would compare interest expense to income before interest and taxes to come up with some figures and hopefully that figures is close enough to what the company is starting with again you're you're going to audit everything but at the beginning if something is out of out of unusual unusually uh, abnormal then you can focus at it focus on it it seems here it's between eight and nine there are times times interest earned if this has been the trend for the past five six years then it means that's what they're trying to keep if this is not with the trend you need to understand why so those are the solvency ratios what should you do now work multiple choice questions go to farhat lectures subscribe work multiple choice questions download the excel sheet and play with it see how the numbers are working so just change the total asset to see how the equity multiplier will work and see how that to equity ratio will work good luck study hard and if you're studying for your cpe exam it's worth it